right now I'm with Denzel Wangya Rumbuchi. And yeah, just uh, wanted to say a few, few words. Um, last week, on the originally we planned for 20, no, I think on 16th uh, April. And at that time I had a small um, retreat up there and I, I forgot the time. The Nepali time, 8.45, in, I think, in, in Chicago, right? You are in, uh, no, you are not in California. Chicago. California, California is eight. So um, I think that is, I think more like a bodhisattva, uh, the bodhisattva kind of thinking. I, I just wanted to share what I felt at that evening. I, I felt a little, um, embarrassed, I feel a little shame, I feel a little guilty that I, I, I let you wait. But then I was late for 15 minutes. Um, yeah, I, I felt a little, I couldn't sleep that night. I feel a little, I, I don't know how, how to face that. You know? But I knew that in my heart, uh, maybe <laughs> you, you will for, forgive me. But next morning when I got a message that, okay, let's do it on 23rd. So I feel much relief and I feel like a real bodhisattva. So yeah, I just wanted to know that what you felt that time that I, I, I didn't, I was late for 15 minutes and I don't know, just, just wanted to know that you're feeling. Well, um, first of all, happy to join here. I'm happy to have this conversation. Um, in my life, I forget all the time things. Mm -hmm. So I have a wonderful uh, assistant, Sue Davis Dill, uh, helping last 25 years. We talk almost every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, she reminds me every day, or oh, tomorrow you have this, and tomorrow you, you need to get your ticket, you need to do this. So when people forget, I know exactly what that experience. So I did not particularly feel anything. So in terms of uh, disappointment or anything like that, I just said, oh, okay, well, that's fine. You know, we can uh, do it another time. So uh, particularly, uh, it's much easier when we are doing like this, recording it, when we are doing it live, there's a lot of hundreds of people expecting that day and mm -hmm. taking the time, then it's a very different. But here, you know, you're doing it recording, so it's not a problem at all. And you know, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for yeah your. So, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, this uh, uh, this interview. I mean, last I think month I had an interview with the John Cabridgean, and I just started with him, and you are the second that I am taking an interview, but it's not an interview, but I give a name, Heart Talk. So I, I just wanted to maybe, I might ask you some, some yeah, whatever the random questions. But before that, uh, I just, instead of in, introduce you, I, I wanted to say like how, yeah, why I met you and like when I met you and yeah, what is my impression about you? So, uh, yeah, we met around, I think I just yeah, make a note that 2016, December, around 21st and 22nd, I arrived in um, Lake Mechap uh, Center in, in Virginia. So, yeah, I mean, how I found you, the Tenzi Wongyo Rinpoche, is because I, wa I was just looking for uh, Chalung practice, like a, who, is, who is doing the Tibetan Chalung practice. And somehow I found in the YouTube, uh, that your five Chalung practice um, and which was, yeah, which was quite uh, interesting for me. And yeah, that, that is, I think that is more, yeah, what I, like how I found you. And then, yeah, I wanted to meet you. And I, I, I found you're also kind of a dream yoga master. And somehow it, it pulled me to like find who, who is this Tenzin Wangyo Rinpoche and and I, 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 yeah, in the beginning, I was a little confused, like, okay, so he, he's uh, like, because I'm sure you know that I grew up in a, the Kaiju monastery and that, that the way they brainwashed, like, oh, pun, you know, pun, pun is 
that, that that's not the Kaju Ingma Sakya. So it was it was quite hes- hesitant in the beginning. Should should I meet him or not? If I meet him, am, am I going into the different things? You know. So anyway, I I, I decided to meet you, and then yeah, I I, I think I, I sent you email or that you accept my uh, yeah I- I- invitation and you invite me to come to your Buddhist center. So yeah, in my impression, the Tenzin Wangyal Rinpoche is more like a he's a great uh, Chalung practitioner, you know, and he's a, a dream yoga master. And then yeah, when I met you, so I I request for the uh, the, the Chalung Lung and I request for the the dream yoga lung and you, you yeah, give me, explain me. And then later, yeah, I met you a few times. I, I felt you're also a kind human and very humble. So th- that is really like an impression like a, about you that I have. And yeah, I just wanted to know what is, yeah, what is my impression about you, you know? <laughs> so that, that's a more way to, like a more direct way to introduce, I think. Yeah, so, well, I'm, first of all, uh, I, I guess uh, it's the same thing that, you know, usually in Tibetan, the different schools always undermine burn tradition, kind of suppress the burn tradition, they're very judgmental about it. Many people from people who don't know anything to people even who are supposed to know a lot of things, they all have similar kind of judgment without really knowing much about the burn. It's kind of uh, critical negative judgments. And so when when I, I heard, the way I heard you it was through German student Oliver, Oliver from um, uh, Germany. He said he was approached by one of your German students that right. you are interested to meet me. And I said, of course, you know, give me my number and I'm happy to meet. So then I think you contacted me. Right. Then we made a said, OK, you can come to New York and we'll come go down. I was with my son at the time. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, I was I thought, yeah, of course, you know, um, the a Tibetan uh, Lama who is interested uh, to receive transmission and uh, learn from Buddhist tradition that already shows uh, openness in the personality, you know. So I respect that, um, that, that already that openness, it's, it's not everybody has that, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I was happy to ha- have you down and give the transmission and uh, uh, talk about the, the practice of the dream yoga. Um, yeah, so that was the kind of, you know, I mean, I always surprise people a little bit, I think. I usually, when people hear me, they hear me, they, everybody has their imagination, oh, things want you to appreciate this and that. And I've seen on the Facebook, I've seen on the YouTube, I've read his book. He, right. he must be very, either very old or he must be very, um, very reserved, you know, many, like many Tibetans, you know, when they are Tibetan lamas, they are, when you approach them, they are very reserved. Right, uh, they yeah. are. They, they will be in one room. You have to wait for outside, and then they go. They when you go inside, it's a very s- special sitting position that you have to follow all the protocols. It's a very different kind of. Uh, you know, people are people are used to think very specific condition way. Right. Yeah, and yeah. me, when people meet me, they get surprised. Is is that you? You know, I went to pick up somebody who wanted. I never met this guy before, and he he wanted a help. He wanted to look for a job and he said, I don't know, I don't have, I don't know, I did not look for a job, but if you're interested to come, you can stay at my home, I'll, you know, for free, food is free, I'll take you a few places to check, but I don't know if I can find you a job or not. But he said, then he decided to come. So I went to pick him up at the bus stop and, um, and first thing he was like very proud or, you know, like a typical older Tibetan person. Okay, okay. He was almost ignoring me a little bit and he, he was like up and he said he said where's Rinpoche he thought I was a driver ah, okay and then uh, I said it, that's me said, <laughs> oh it's you then he immediately go with the very very humbling you know right. so it's from two different faces from one 
if it's a driver, then you, you know, you look down. If you're Rumbachi, you look up. It's not like mm-hmm. that, you know, it's just a, um, yeah. Anyway, I think I often give this impression for people. They don't, they, they, they have their imagination of somebody, right? That's great. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, my question is that, um, yeah, what is compassion really? What is compassion or the bodhicitta? really means for you and how, or how do you practice in your, your, your real life that please advice for all this and who is in participating in 100 Days Compassion Challenge. Thank you. So, you know, like when uh, I think the term compassion can be seen in a very general term that people, everybody have some ideas about what it means to care about others and support others. But in a typical, in a Buddhist term, when, when we say bodhicitta, compassion, it's also like, a, you know, we're saying uh, focusing on achieving enlighten, enlightenment in order to help other people. So that is generally, so it, that is the, for other people that may I achieve some sense of awakening liberation in order to help other people so it's very much focus on oneself of achieving something but very much focus on other so i can help other so it's it's like a kind of going beyond suffering for myself and for others that is the core part of the core part mm-hmm. of the suffering how you say the compassion right so one mm-hmm. very traditional uh classic kind of definition and then we have a word called ningje which is uh, uh we say is that may may all the sentient being not suffer may they go beyond suffering so this is kind of two different kind of ningje and simji is two different thing but in the west sometimes compassion they say that kind of get a get a little mix up which is fine i think right. both are good both are good equally good so so i guess that's the more classic kind of uh, explanation but uh, um generally for me i've been thinking about it a lot you know uh it's always deep sense of openness i think what matters the most if the openness means you are i'm open to, you know, either it's a rumbo chair or driver, it doesn't matter so much, or I'm open because it's a burn or kaju. I'm open is somebody I know or I don't know. Uh, I'm open to, even to the point, even somebody who, who has it threatened me or I, I feel to be threatened by, uh, I feel somebody is judgmental to me uh, or somebody who is really praising me all the time. Mm-hmm. I need kind of trying to be open to both. And because I, in the end, I don't know even who is praising me it turned out to be a horrible person and who has been very judgmental. He might be a very critical person, but he might be very wise and most mm-hmm. supportive in my life. Nobody knows about it. So I think fundamentally being open is the core part of good compassion. Because you cannot really have a good compassion unless you're open because your compassion will be very limited and biased. And sometimes compassion can be very self self centered compassion. That even it's always okay. I will I will I care about you if you do this. I care about you if you love me. If you, I care about you if you are Buddhist Buddhist. Or I can, you know it's always a condition by something. I think right. that is not <clears throat> not so helpful. Personally, for me, uh, I feel that I just feel that I'm always trying to be optimistic and I'm trying to uh, help anybody, anybody, you know, uh, who is neat. And if there's something that I can do, right. and I feel that if I can do any time, anything to anybody, that's the only moment I have that opportunity to do it. But if I don't take the action that moment, I might not be able to do it next time. And I might not have the resources to do it. I might not have the time to do it. I might not have been cap- capable of doing it because conditions of health and, or or even somebody might not even ask me to do it. Somebody, you know, so, so I see every moment in life is a very important moment of helping and serving others. 
and as much as selfless possible because the selfless means openness right, the yeah. more selfless you are more open you are so but of course as a human being we are always some condition some kind of boundaries are there but watching that one boundary and trying to open up as much as possible even even you know like sometime i don't know i will mention the name but a very very well known a western emotional intelligence person right, yeah. and uh, i have one time invited him through someone uh, to come on a facebook he said he said uh, oh yeah i would have come but there are there are pompous <laughs> and uh, when i heard that i was so disappointed i mean i have a, i had a respect to that person because of the book and because of his his you know being res respected but when i heard that one word this supposed guy is supposed to be an emotional intelligence person and he thinks that way it, it it's just a sign right yeah. did not did not get the point so so i think um, of course we all have some weakness but i think the ability to watch yourself all the time these conditions and the ability to see the opportunity that you have every given moment to support that that i feel and that's what i try to live right yeah thank you